Hey Savvy People, it's Savvy Nick here, and today I'll be continuing with Episode 5 in the C++ tutorial for beginners. In this episode, we'll be covering some operators in C++. We'll talk about four categories today and skim through what's available in each category. First off, I'll go ahead and talk about arithmetic, followed by comparison operators, then the logical operators, and finally, the bitwise operators. So I'll go ahead and leave these four categories here. Let's go ahead and go through the various different operators available in arithmetic. So let me just make a comment here and say that there's the plus operator, minus operator, multiplication operator, division operator, modulus operator, increment, and decrement operator here in the arithmetic category. And let's go ahead and give examples of each of these. I'll go ahead and create two floats one called value one and another called value two. And let's go ahead and initialize these to something. I'll just do two and four for value two. Following that, we'll go ahead and apply these various operators to these two numbers. Keep up with the series and support the channel by subscribing below and hitting the notification bell for more Linux and programming videos. So what operators do, as you can tell probably, is allow you to do various mathematical and logical operations on values. And it's important to know these in order to go ahead and come up with some kind of a result so you can go ahead and display it to a user in your program. So the first one we're going to use is the plus operator. Let's go ahead and use C out so we can display the value that we get to the console. So I'm just going to go ahead and do value one and then put plus between that and value two. And just to make things clean, I'll go ahead and add an end line here. All right, so now we have our first statement. All right, so this just means value one will get added to value two, and then that's the result. So we could expect that this would be two plus four, which would equal six here. So with the plus operator here, we can expect a number six. And we'll go ahead and check this out in just a moment, but we'll go ahead and continue on. And the next operator we're going to use, of course, is the minus operator. So value one is two minus value two. So two minus a four is equal to negative two. So this minus operator here is going to be equal to negative two. Continuing on, we have the multiplication symbol. So the multiplication symbol in C++ here is the asterisk. So if we take value one, multiply it by what's ever on the right, so value two, it's going to give us a value of eight. So we should be expecting eight here. Let's continue on with the division operator. So if we have a division, we'll take value one, which is two, and of course this is a floating point number. So technically this has a decimal. I'll go ahead and add that in for demonstration purposes. So two divided by four should give us a half or 0.5. So let's go ahead and say that the division symbol will give us 0.5 in this case. I'm just gonna put zero in front of here. And then we'll talk about the modulus operator. So modulus will actually give us the remainder of these two values. So value one divided by value two. Two can only go into four once and it'll take out two and give us a remainder of two. Some of these of course we'll be using and are very important throughout the C++ tutorial for beginners. Other ones aren't so necessary, but we might as well show most of them here. Finally, we have the plus plus and the minus minus operator. So let's go ahead and we'll talk about those in a moment. But first, we'll go ahead and run this program as is now. So we should expect six, negative two, eight, point five, and two when we run the program. And before I continue, I noticed one error. I'm trying to find a remainder of two floats. In here, I might need to go ahead and use integers. Well, I will have to use integers. So I'm going to actually make a set of integers I'm gonna call them value three, which is equal to also two, and int value four, which I'll go ahead and set as four. That way we can use the modulus operator down here, and let's go ahead and save this and give this a try. First, I wanna make sure to compile, and then I'll go ahead and run my program. And now I get six, negative two, eight, 0.5 and two. Well, does this actually add up to what I put here? Sure does. So we've confirmed that we understand how to go ahead and use these various different operations. 
The other two that we've left are the plus plus and minus minus. So let's go ahead and give those a try as well. So this time I'll go ahead and use plus plus. Now you can either use plus plus in front or behind a value. I'll go ahead and use it in front. And all this means is first increment the value and then do whatever operation you want on it. Otherwise, if you have a plus plus behind a value, that means go ahead and use the first value and then add one to it after the fact. So here we would expect plus plus to lead us to three and we might as well reuse this and let's just use two, value two. And here we would expect if we use minus minus for the value to be instead of four, it's going to be three as well. So save that, go ahead and rerun this. I'll make sure to compile and then to run the program. All right, and I got a three and a five. So I must've done something wrong here on the last thing. So instead of plus plus, I meant minus minus. So let's go ahead and save this and give it another try. Got to change that and rerunning at this time, we do have three and three in fact. So great job if you've made it this far. You've successfully learned all the arithmetic operators here available in C++. And if you went ahead and made it this far, please hit the like button for me. It really does help me out. Let's continue on to the comparison operators. So there are a few here and the ones that are important are the less than, greater than, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, equal to or equivalent, and not equal to not equivalent. So we'll go ahead and run through these cases as well. We'll use the integer values from before. So let me go ahead and copy these down and then comment out this section so we can go ahead and continue our new section. Continuing on, we'll go ahead and use those two values, three and four, and then I can just reuse one of my statements. I'll go ahead and copy the last one, reuse it down here. And instead of this, I'm going to use less than. So is value three less than value four? Well, I actually need one other thing here and that's a result, which we'll just call a bool. So let me define a bool, AKA true or false. And that's going to be a result. Otherwise we'll get errors and the result can be whatever for now, but we'll set it to something as we're going through these various different operations. So result value three, is it less than value four? And then we're going to print out that result. So we have value three is two less than four. Well, yes it is. So for the case less than, it is in fact true or one. So we'll go ahead and reuse this for greater than as well. So let's change this to greater than. So is value three, two, greater than value four, which is four? No, it's not. So this one is going to be false or a zero. We'll go ahead and copy this right here and reuse these so we can check if they're either less than or equal to or greater than or equal to each other. Well, we know that these are going to remain the same, true and false, since two is less than or equal to four, but it's not equal to. And in this case, value three, which is two, is not greater than or equal to value four. So if we had two twos or two fours, these could be true, but otherwise they should come out the same here as the cases above. So let's go ahead and check this out. And now we've introduced four more operators for comparison here in C++. I'm going to go ahead and compile things and then run. So we said one zero, one zero here. So is that true? One zero, one zero. That is the case. We've successfully checked and used the four operators there. Finally, there are two more that we're going to introduce and let's go ahead and make two more copies down here. That is the double equal to and not equal to or exclamation point equal to. This just means is value three exactly the same as value four, is that true or false? and then that will get stored in our result. Or for this one down here, is value three not equal to value four? And then that will get stored into our result. Well, for this one, this is going to be false. So we should expect a zero. And for this one, they're not equal to each other. So we should expect a true. Let's give this a shot as well. And we'll rerun things here. And we have a zero and a one. And that's exactly what we predicted. 
zero, one, zero, one. We're almost done here, but we got a few more things to go through. We have the logical and bitwise operators. So I'm going to go ahead again, comment all this out so we can continue on to the next category of operators. So for logical operators, we have a few kinds. One's the double ampersand, which just means and. We have the double pipe, which just means or. And we have the exclamation point, which means not. So invert. How would we use these? Well, let's go through these fairly quick. So if you had two bools, let's call it result one and bool result two. And let's set these equal to something we'll say true and false here. So for the double ampersand to be true, we're going to have to have two true statements. So result one will have to be true and result two will have to be true. So for this one, if we did a new result, so let's just say bool result up here and we didn't set that equal to anything, we could say if the result is equal to result one and result two, well, what would that be? Well, let's check that out. We can just use this from above copy and paste that below and print out the result here. So I would expect result one is true, result two is false. So both of these are not true, therefore this will be false. The operator we're using here is the double ampersand. And I realized a mistake up here. I didn't change any of these values. So this is less than or equal to, this is greater than or equals to, and then double equal and not equal, just to keep things consistent. Now, moving down to here, that's what I would expect with this result. Let's move on to another one, which is the two pipes, which means an or, we'll change that here. And I don't really need these right here. I already have that posted down here. So for this case, result one is true, result two is false. If either one, also known as an or, is true, then we would expect a true statement here. And just to throw not in there, we can simply take a result and not it. So we just have to throw a exclamation point in front of a variable and that will actually invert the variable. So if result one was true, it's going to become false in here. So we'll just say not here is false or equal to so let's go ahead and make sure that this turns out right. So we're expecting a zero, one, and a zero in our program. All right, we'll go ahead and compile, rerun, and we get a zero, one, and a zero, which is exactly what we expected. All right, that's briefly talking about our logical operators available for us in C++. We'll move on to finally the bitwise operators. I'll go ahead and run through these without actually compiling and running code just because it will be easier to cover. But make sure you go ahead and look over any of these that don't make sense to you. Go ahead and write them out yourself and then just give a few test cases with numbers to make sure that you properly understand all the different operators available to you in C++. They will come in handy in the future. So you'll make sure you want to understand them properly. So for bitwise operations, we have the bitwise and, and that's just one ampersand the bitwise or, and that's just one pipe symbol, we have the left shift and the right shift. Op now there are a few more bitwise operators, but we won't talk about them today. We'll reach those in a future video if we get around to it. All right, suppose we had a few bits together and let's say we had four zeros. So each of these bits represents their own value. This is uh, either any of these can be a zero or a one. So I just chose four zeros string together. Then I'll go ahead and string four ones together. If we went ahead and use the bitwise and operator, what we would get out of here is a zero, 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 zero. That's because if either of the numbers that we're trying to and together are a zero, then the result will be a zero. They both have to be one in order to turn out to one. So let's say we had this case. Well, then everything would be one as shown. So let's go ahead and continue. That's fairly easy. Of course, that was for the bitwise and case. If we had a bitwise or, so we first started with four zeros and then four ones. So what would this be as far as an or goes? Well, it would be one, 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 one. Why is this the case? Well, for a bitwise or, if you or two things together, 
as long as there's a one in either of the two, then the result is a one. So the only way you could get a zero down here is if you had all zeros all together, then this would result into four zeros. Finally, we have the shift left and the shift right. So if we shifted values together, we'll again use our four bits. This time I'm using one zero zero zero. If we went ahead and shifted this to the left, we can specify how many numbers we want to shift to the left. So if I said I wanted to shift this to the left by one, that would be an equivalent of zero 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 because this bit right here would have gotten shifted off to the end and since there's not a boolean there anymore everything else becomes zeros if uh, let's say we did zero zero one zero and we shifted that by two we would get the result of one zero 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 because this one would have moved two places to the left again this is for the bitwise left shift operator let's finally talk about the right shift operator so we'll use this exact same example again and test this out with the right shift. So we'll change the operator here. Again, these are all available in C++. So what does this equal and what does this equal? If we use the right shift operator and we did it by one, this would be equivalent to changing this to zero, one, zero, zero, and this one to zero, 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 because again, the one would have been moved over two times to the right and gotten dropped off since this example only holds four bits. Well, that's about it. You've learned about the four different categories of C++ operators. Of course, there are a few more under each category, but we've covered the most basic ones as well as the most important ones, in my opinion. And the four categories, again, were the arithmetic, comparison, logical, and bitwise operators. And that's about it. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please make sure to post them in the comment section below. Also make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.